What's up, everybody, and welcome back to In Search of Answers, the show where you guys ask me questions and I do my very best to answer them. Uh, reminder, if you would like to ask a question to potentially have it answered here on the show, all you got to do, leave a comment here on YouTube and I will do my best to get to it. Also, if you're a patron, you can head over to Patreon and in the description for this episode on Patreon, you will see a link to a form that you can fill out because patrons do get priority on having their questions uh, questions answered here on the show. So let's get started. The first question is from Patreon. It comes from Ganrock again, who said, out of all the different skill slash talent tree iterations that WoW has had dating back to classic until now, which has been your favorite? So this is maybe a weird take, but I've always actually really enjoyed the Cataclysm version of the talent trees. I liked the the point spending. I liked the way that it, it still continued to, uh, to go down the tree. And that felt very like, wow, to me, it felt very much like World of Warcraft. It just wasn't the massively bloated like Wrath of the Lich King talent trees that were starting to get a little bit unwieldy, in my opinion, just because honestly, more of an interface problem than anything else. I don't think that number of points necessarily was bad. Uh, it was just trying to cram it all into that talent UI made it kind of annoying. Um, and I really liked the way that they sort of distilled things down a little bit in Cataclysm and made it a little bit more straightforward. There were a few things I didn't like about that system. I didn't like that, you know, getting talent points became a not every level thing as a result and uh, some other weirdness that, that came along with it. But like looking at the system as a whole, I felt like that was the system that I, I liked the most out of all the different uh, talent tree systems. Um, beyond that, probably Wrath of the Lich King. Like, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit of a bit of a classic Andy these days, but I, I liked having the actual trees. I do like the concept of the modern talent tree system and the way it sort of works out these days where you have some of those choice nodes and then basically a, a regular talent tree system again. Um, it just, for some reason, I, the sideways stuff, I don't know why they made it like a lattice instead of a straight up grid. Like the, the sideways stuff is weird to me. It feels like they did that because they didn't want it to look like Wrath of the Lich King talent trees instead of because it made sense. Um, the I don't know, this maybe just my brain being my brain, but the the sideways angle stuff is is weird to me. So I think of all of the the skill slash talent tree iterations that WoW has had, I think Cataclysm is the one that, for me at least, kind of just resonated the best. Um, but like I said, there there's definitely aspects of that talent tree system that I, I didn't really like. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the Mists of Pandaria system. Like, I liked the idea of it at the start. Um, and I liked where they were going with the the concept of, like, these are talents that you switch around on a, on a regular basis based on what you're doing. Um, I just think in practice, it turned out to be kind of flat, and it just wasn't really that interesting overall. And then they ended up having to do weird stuff in future expansions where it's like, do you actually get a new talent tree or a new talent tier uh, at the the max level, the new max level or whatever? So... That one ended up being a little bit weird to me. So I think, yeah, I think as I'm talking through it, I'm still just sort of reinforcing and convincing myself that I liked the Cataclysm version the most. Again, there were some issues with it, but I think of the talent tree systems that WoW has had, uh, Cataclysms was probably the one that, that fit the best and did the best overall for me. Now, that said, I don't have as much experience with the modern one because I haven't been playing Dragonflight that much. I've mostly been on Classic these days. Uh, so it's possible that uh, once I get a little bit more familiar with the the modern one, that I will like it just as much. We'll have to see. I'm actually really looking forward to uh, digging back into retail once the War Within starts to come around. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Cool. Let's move on. Next question comes from VTX Shiva on YouTube, who asked, uh, from your point of view, should developers care about or balance their games around metas? Should metas even be a consideration for balance? Um, and this is an absolute resounding yes. They they have to consider metas when it comes to balance. Uh, because so the the important thing to understand is that a metagame, the way that things, which by the way, it's not an acronym, it's just the shorter for, uh, form of the word metagame. Uh, but the way that a metagame develops is just by players doing things. And they they sort of gravitate toward whatever they find to be the most efficient. So if the developers ignore what, is developing as the meta, then they're essentially ignoring whatever players find to be the most efficient. And that's not, that's not good. That's, that's bad. That's very bad. You have to be considering what players are doing in your game when making balance considerations. Aside from the fact that players will tend to gravitate towards whatever they do find to be the most efficient, 
Um, it's also the fact that like sometimes that's not actually like maybe maybe they're actually wrong. Like maybe the meta develops in such a way because of a misconception among the community about how something works. But even if that's the case, that still affects the gameplay that affects the play experience for everyone else. If you're uh, if you are a raider in World of Warcraft, for example, and the meta is that you have to have five warlocks in every raid and the developers just ignored that they like every raid was inviting five warlocks to every single raid. Uh, then the problem would pretty rapidly become if you were a player of that game and you didn't want to play a warlock, it was harder for you to get into raids. And if you were a raid leader, you were ha having a hard time finding warlocks all the time. Something that's actually occurred in the past uh, in World of Warcraft. Um, looking to other games, like uh, think about like a League of Legends, like a MOBA sort of game. If you ignore that everyone believes like... <laughs> League of Legends for a long time really tried to pretend that people weren't just always sending a solo top, a AP mid, uh, and an AD with a support bottom lane and having a jungler. They really tried to pretend that that wasn't the meta for their game for the longest time. Uh, and it actively, I think, resulted in some weird situations where they would either come out with a champion that just didn't make any sense and was never going to get played because players received this champion and went, this doesn't fit into any of the correct holes, so therefore we're not going to play it. Um, and then eventually, like one of, in my opinion, one of the best things that they did for the game, where they allowed you, at least on Wild Rift, I actually don't know if they ever put this in main League of Legends, but I know on Wild Rift, you could queue as a jungler. You could queue as an AP carry and so on. So that, that way, once you got into the game, you didn't then have to be like, by the way, I'm insta-locking Trindamir and going top lane. Uh, you could actually decide in advance what you wanted to do. And then once you got into the group, you didn't have to like uh, you didn't have to like argue with your group mates to figure out uh, what role it was going to be. So uh, those are a couple of examples of why paying attention to the meta is important, um, even if it's not something catastrophic like five warlocks in every raid or people insta locking Trindamir, like it's still ultimately paying attention to the meta and balancing around the meta is literally just a function of balancing your game based on what players are doing with it, which is a fundamental part of game design. If you're ignoring what your players are doing, then you're making a bad game as a result. So yeah, it's absolutely important for the way that a meta game develops to be considered as part of, uh, as part of balance. And I, I think a lot of people try to push against the concept of a meta game. Um, but that's, that's just never going to happen. Like literally, as I've said a couple times now, the metagame is what players are doing with the game. And eventually, like some players experience with that will be looking it up and saying like, oh, this is the meta. So therefore, this is what I have to do. But regardless of whether that ever occurs, that metagame will still develop no matter what. Um, and so you have to consider, at least in any competitive game or any group play game, this metagame will develop. So you have to consider what uh, what the result of that is going to be. For your player base otherwise you're you're just ignoring what players are doing in your game and that's bad all right let's move on next question comes from uh i'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this i think it's mongo indie leo on youtube who said uh i've always wondered why blizzard has never put out another game to expand upon wow do you have any thoughts on this so first of all i need to throw a little disclaimer at the front of this which is a i don't work at blizzard anymore i haven't for a couple of years now i don't know if they have things in development or not um, and secondly, obviously, there are possibilities that I would know things from my history in my time at Blizzard, and I'm not going to, like, spill any of those, like, industry secrets here on my YouTube channel. That's not what this is for. This is not a Blizzard leaks channel or anything like that. Um, not that I have anything to leak anymore at this point anyway, but still, just wanted to make sure that's clear. This is not from, this is from my perspective as a Warcraft fan and a Warcraft player, not as a former Blizzard employee. Just wanted to make sure that that's clear. So uh, sort of two thoughts that I would have in response to this question. One is they have actually come out with games that do expand upon Warcraft. Maybe not in the sense that you're asking here, but it's worth noting that like Hearthstone is a game that expanded on Warcraft and has now started to develop some of its own lore in addition to that and its own characters and built out some uh, actual like ideas and is expanding the Warcraft universe in its own way. Uh, I expect Warcraft Rumble will end up doing a lot of the same. It's already sort of kind of leaning in that direction a little bit as it's like concept of a essentially an arcade game that is played in the world of Warcraft. Um, I'm I'm expecting that there will be some sort of expansions uh, and additional content that will start to squeeze out its own little part of Warcraft lore as well. But I'm sure that's not really what you're asking here. 
Um, and in fact, there was there was some parts of the question that I didn't include in the overlay that, uh, that made it clear that they're they're not really asking about like what essentially feels like alternate like mini games uh, in some sense to a Warcraft player. Um, they're asking about why is there not like a uh, like a, a Warcraft four? Why is there not like a another addition to the story in some capacity uh, for the Warcraft franchise? And genuinely, I don't know. I think it's a really good idea. I would love to see more games that come out that are centering around, let's expand the lore of the Warcraft universe. Let's do new stuff that is canon to Warcraft and continues to expand on that story. It's possible that with Chris Metzen back at Blizzard now, they'll start to explore some more of that. Um, not that they necessarily needed Metzen there to do that, but it seems like the sort of thing that he might want to do is start to expand out the Warcraft lore a little bit more. Um, but also at the same time, like World of Warcraft is a lot of work. Like there's a lot that goes into making WoW and there's a lot of story and et cetera that gets added into WoW as a result. Uh, and it's not necessarily the easiest thing for them to spin up a game that is also adding story at the same time as they're adding story in this other thing. Like I feel like I I any game like this would either have to be uh, like in a just completely separate time period to Warcraft or uh, something that is just so closely integrated with WoW that it might as well be WoW at that point. Um, because, like, like say you have a, a, a game that is, all right, I'm going to play as, uh, I don't know, I'm going to play as Thrall, and I'm going to go out and have adventures as Thrall. Like, you have to figure out then how does that translate into the story of World of Warcraft, what you're doing as Thrall in this other game where you're, you're like, I don't know, maybe it's a hack and slash or something, and you're running around, you're you're fighting... I don't know, troll, trolls or something. I don't know why Thrall would fight trolls, but this is just me coming up with stuff as an example off the top of my head. Um, it's possible that there, or it would be necessary for that, whatever that side story is, to then be included in the WoW story in some capacity. They can't just put that out there and then ignore it and say it's not canon or something like that. That would be weird. Um, so it would have to be either super tightly integrated with WoW to the point that it's probably a story that's best told in WoW anyway, or it would have to be something that's so separated and so different and so unrelated to World of Warcraft uh, that it, I almost feel like it would have to be like an alternate universe or an alternate time or something like that. Like maybe it's, I don't know, like going back to the war, of the, like they could have games that are about the War of the Ancients way back in the day because we already kind of know how that translates to modern WoW. So they could explore alternate games that exist inside that time frame, for example. Um, but... Then again, there's there's like time travel stuff that happens in WoW where you do that anyway. So I don't know. I think I would love to see more Warcraft lore told in stories that are in other games and other styles of games. I would love to see. I think the example that they gave um, in this this original question was like the idea of a, a third person over the shoulder, like hack and slash sort of game. I would love to play that game. I think that would be great. Um, I just think like if you're trying to examine the idea of why hasn't Blizzard already done this, it's important to recognize that it's actually a complicated thing to try to solve, which I think is why most of the like offshoot games that we've seen in the Warcraft universe so far have been these sort of like mini games or party games that like people might play inside Warcraft, but isn't necessarily a new Warcraft story, if that makes any sense. So yeah, that I think pretty much summarizes my thoughts on that question. So Let's move on. Next question. This will be our last question for today. Comes from Goose Comics, who says, How do you manage to sustain your energy and performance while on the streamathon for over 35 days? I've seen this trend kicking up on a lot of streams lately, and I just feel that any type of work with no breaks is not healthy. Um, so there's a few things that I will say in response to this question. Uh, it's a really good question, and I'm glad that you asked it. Um, first of all, uh, I am a broken human. <laughs> like, I'm just sorry, I'm now spitting everywhere, apparently. Uh, I am a broken human. Um, I am someone who can play video games all day, every day and not feel like tired or worn out from it. Um, and I'm also some like I've been streaming for so long. I've been doing this sort of thing for so long that I almost like. I, I almost don't enjoy video games as much when I'm not streaming. Like for me, if I'm playing something like Plunderstorm, for example, I want to be streaming while I'm doing it so that when something crazy happens in the game, I have a chat that I can go and talk to and like interact with. And I'm like, Hey, did you guys see that? Oh, that was crazy or whatever. Um, I'm, I, that's who I am as a, just as a video gamer nowadays. 
mostly with multiplayer games, single player games. I actually tend to not stream single player games when I'm going like I was playing through the Alan Wake series not too long ago. Um, and I didn't stream any of that because that was something where I was like, no, this one is just for me. I don't necessarily want to stream it uh, partially because, you know, it's good to step away from stream every once in a while, even as someone who's been doing it as long as I have. Um, and also partially because I didn't want spoilers. Um, and I know, I know how, I know how Twitch chats can be with single player games that are heavily story based. Um, but that aside, part of how I sustain my energy and performance while I'm on the streamathon for as long as it's been is that it's just not a huge like energy expenditure for me. Uh, just because I've been doing it for so long that I can, I, I just have the ability now to not feel like I'm like really pushing myself when I'm like glancing up at the clock and seeing that I've been accidentally streaming for 16 hours. Like that's just something that happens where I'm like, Oh, I've been doing this for 16 hours. Oh, interesting. Neat. Um, that said, uh, I do agree that breaks are super important. Um, in fact, I'm actually planning on taking a break for a couple of days, um, uh, before we come into uh season or phase three of season of discovery. I'm actually going to be taking a couple of days off, uh, before that that phase starts just to you know recuperate a little bit and make sure that I can go into phase three ready to like really go ham on it um, and not feel like I'm you know lacking in other things plus I like I still haven't done my taxes I need to get that done I have things that I need to accomplish that have been going on while the streamathon is going on um, so I am starting to incorporate breaks I have been taking Wednesdays to work on YouTube stuff for a while and now with um, in search of answers I'm probably going to start taking Sundays as well so that I can record this on Sundays and then get it out on Mondays. Um, so that's that I will have a couple of days a week that I'm not streaming anyway, which then can kind of turn into a break a little bit. Obviously, I'm still doing some work on those days, but I'm going to be doing something on those days. I'm not the sort of person that can just like not be working on something. Even when I'm even when I'm not working on work, I'm still working on some kind of project no matter what. That's just kind of how I am. Uh, the other thing that I will say that I think is important to note about my streamathon is that it's not like a lot of people assume that streamathon means it's always live, it's up 24 7, and this is like a constant, you're always doing things. That's not how I've approached this streamathon. In fact, that's why I don't call it a subathon, because subathon kind of means there's a timer that ticks down and you can subscribe to a channel and that timer goes up and the stream stays live until that timer runs out. Um, that's not what I'm doing. I am ending every day. Uh, I am like the, the way it works is that you can contribute to add days to the, uh, the total amount. Um, but then that's a, that, that day is a singular package stream. Um, and so the, the stream a thon, the a thon part of it is more about the unlocks and the goals and the challenges that are done and less about like just keeping it going forever. Adding time to it gives more time for those things to be unlocked and more goals to be unlocked, but it doesn't like, doesn't mean that the stream stays live essentially. So that's kind of how I've been approaching this streamathon. There's a lot that I've learned uh, over the course of doing this, um, and it has been going on now. In fact, at this point, uh, we're about to start day 41 of the streamathon of the original five day streamathon that I started. Um, there's a lot that I've learned about it, and I may end up doing some sort of like, I don't know, post mortem, probably just as part of a stream at some point. I'll just give my general thoughts on how it went uh, once it's actually over with, um, if it ever actually ends. Um, but I have learned a lot about uh, ways to like interact with viewers and so on as part of this this streamathon. And there's a lot that if I had I, there's there are things that I would have started off differently if I had like known what I know now about how this sort of things run. So I don't know that was kind of a meandering and rambly answer, but hopefully that at least somewhat answered the the question that you asked there. Basically, TLDR on how I've been able to sustain myself over the streamathon for thirty days. Now, 40 days, excuse me, um, is that I'm a broken human who does not tire in the way that a normal human being should. Um, and I also don't sleep is part of it, too. Well, I do sleep. I sleep at weird times. I go to bed at like 5 a.m. most days and I wake up at like noon. So there's that. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Again, if you would like to have your question answered here on the show, you can either leave a comment on the YouTube uh, comments below. Leave a comment on the YouTube comment. I don't know what that means. You can either leave a comment here on YouTube, or if you're a patron, you can head over to Patreon. Um, find the posting for this episode in there. There will be a link that takes you to a form that will get you a, a method as a patron to get priority on having your question answered. 
Um, but again, obviously, a lot of the questions that are coming in are YouTube focused. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can still go ahead and just leave a comment and I will do my best to get your questions answered. Um, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you later.